Hi everyone, Robert Kajiwara here, and today we're talking about the history of Christianity in Hawaii. Now, Christianity has played a tremendously important role in Hawaii's history and in uh, helping shape society in Hawaii to what it is today. It's uh, played an important role in both positive and negative ways. Uh, so if you want to have an understanding of uh, Hawaii's history and in modern uh, society here in Hawaii today, uh, you really have to have a solid understanding of Hawaii's Christian history. It's a huge subject. Uh, you can't really explain it in just five minutes, but that's what I'm going to try to do here today. In 1778, Captain James Cook became the first European to visit the Hawaiian Islands. And a lot of people think that this was uh, Hawaiian's first encounter with Christianity. But this is not exactly true. Around 2,000 years ago, the first Polynesian settlers came to the Hawaiian Islands and they worshipped the monotheistic god they called Io. Some believe Io to be the same god as the Hebrew god Yahweh or Jehovah. Both the names Io and Yahweh were considered too sacred to speak, and Io and Yahweh share a common set of attributes. A lot of Hawaiian Christians to this day use the name Io uh, in the Hawaiian language uh, for Yahweh. Around the 13th century, a Tahitian sorcerer by the name of Pa'ao invaded the Hawaiian Islands and instituted a set of religious taboos known as the Kapu system. The Kapu system would reign over the Hawaiian Islands for the next 500 years. Though illegal and subject to deadly punishment if caught, some Hawaiians continued to practice the worship of Io and handed it down from generation to generation. During the early 1800s, a young Hawaiian man named Henry Opukaha'ia traveled to New England where he eventually attended Yale College and became the first Hawaiian scholar and the first Hawaiian Christian. Opukaha'ia taught the people of New England about his home, Hawaii, and he requested that Christian churches in New England send missionaries to the Hawaiian Islands to share the gospel with the Hawaiian people. Tragically though, Henry Opukahaia contracted typhus fever and died at the young age of 26. But his death sparked a surge of interest among the people of New England and among many Christians all across America in the Hawaiian Islands, inspiring a wave of missionaries to travel to Hawaii. The first missionaries arrived in the Hawaiian Islands in the year 1820. Coincidentally, right before they arrived, King Kamehameha II and his mother, Queen Ka'ahumanu, decided to abolish the 500-year-old kapu system. They decided that the kapu system was no longer in Hawaii's best interests. By the time the first missionaries arrived, there was a huge socio-religious gap in Hawaii, and eventually Christianity would be used to fill this gap. When Christianity had first spread through Europe, it was allowed to adopt and adapt uh, a lot of secular or pagan uh, cultural influences. So there's actually a lot of Greek and Roman and German uh, pagan or secular cultural influences um, in Western culture to this day, and no one gives it a second thought. So that's how the leaders of the Hawaiian Kingdom envisioned Christianity spreading through the Hawaiian Islands. They envisioned it taking on and adapting to Hawaiian culture just as it had done uh, through Europe. The white American missionaries, though, uh, refused to allow this to happen. So they, they actually abolished uh, a lot of uh, Hawaiian cultural practices such as hula. The missionaries sought to secure religious power for themselves in Hawaii. They distrusted the dark-skinned Polynesians, and they created some very significant uh, cultural and racial divisions uh, that last in Hawaii to this day. The sending churches back home in the U.S. had instructed the missionaries not to get involved in business or politics or anything of that sort, and to just stay focused on spreading the gospel. When the missionaries first arrived to Hawaii, they obeyed that order, but over the coming years and decades, they grew increasingly secular. Uh, they got heavily involved in business and politics. 
and they really lost sight of their Christian mission. In 1825, Christianity became the official state religion of the Hawaiian Kingdom by proclamation of Queen Ka'ahumanu. The next decade, revival broke out all across the Hawaiian Islands, and Hawaii eventually became uh, one of the most Christian nations on earth. During the mid to late 1800s, Hawaii became a prosperous, advanced nation on par with many other nations around the world, and they became highly respected in the international community, including by Britain, France, the United States, and many other nations. By the late 1800s, though, the children of the American missionaries, who are now adults uh, and very wealthy, uh, they became very greedy and wanted to increase their wealth even more. These missionaries conspired with U.S. Ambassador to Hawaii, John L. Stevens, to usurp the Hawaiian Kingdom and install themselves as an oligarchy over the Hawaiian Islands. So in 1893, with no knowledge or consent of the Congress or the U.S. President, Ambassador Stevens ordered a contingent of U.S. Marines to invade Honolulu and basically kidnap the Queen. I've already talked a lot about this part of Hawaiian history in many of my previous videos, so I don't want to belabor the point here. Feel free to check out uh, my other videos if you like. This is a critically important part of Hawaiian history, and there are a lot of great sources out there that cover this well. But long story short, Queen Liliuokalani believed that America was a Christian nation, and she believed that America would do the right thing and reinstate her as queen and, and uh, restore the Hawaiian kingdom. The U.S. president at the time, Grover Cleveland, agreed that this uh, needed to be done. Many other uh, U.S. politicians uh, also believed that this was the right thing to do. Unfortunately, Cleveland's term in office expired, and the new president, McKinley, uh, was a staunch imperialist. He basically threw out this idea of uh, reinstating the queen, and instead, he and his imperialist buddies in the Congress decided to keep Hawaii for themselves. And long story short, that is why Hawaii belongs to the United States to this day. A small group of greedy white American male businessmen who were the direct descendants of missionaries decided to usurp the peaceful and friendly and Christian nation of Hawaii. All so they could benefit their own personal business interests. So there you go. That's a very brief history of Christianity in Hawaii. I could talk all day about this, but we're out of time for now. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more of our videos. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.